Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Pete Man Reviews. Today is the final part of our Stunticons review. These are the Combiner Wars Unite Warriors variant, uh, as shown by the fact that you have Dead End instead of Blackjack. Um, Dead End being a, a recolour and slight remould of Wild Rider over here. Now, all five Stunticons by themselves um, look extremely good. They feel like proper cars, uh, they're a good size. The mould, particularly on uh, Motor Master and Drag Strips alt mode, is particularly good. Um, breakdown looks pretty good as well, but as I've said, the first two are superior moulds. Now, obviously this final part uh, is going to be the combination to Menasaur. And let's face it, Menasaur is the mould mold. you're mostly going to have them in. But they do look good by themselves, and it's just worth showing that. Now, Menasaur does have a couple of issues, particularly around his feet, because the cars are so bulky, the feet look a bit out of place, but we'll come to that as we combine them. So, <coughs> so we'll start with feet first. Um, now, the feet obviously, they are Scramble City combiners, so with the exception of Motor Master, the other four will sit in any arms or legs that you wish, um, which seems to be fairly common now with nearly all combiners, uh, with obviously the obvious exception of the, the, of the Constructor Cons. Um, however, we'll put it in its classic configuration, so Wild Rider and Breakdown will be the feet. So we'll just move the other guys back a bit, and they should actually be that way around as well. Okay, so we'll start with Wild Rider. Now, you've already got the bottom of the car set up, so you've got the hole there, and that is almost there. What you need to do is you need to get the head out of the way for now. I say the head, it's the front of the car out of the way. So. As you were transforming him to a robot, this flips back like that. Then the whole lot, including the head compartment, all flips back as well. And that goes all the way down this time, so all the way down to there, so this is perfectly level. You've then got this uh, part here, so the grey bit, which is the part that I've said has always been the mental connector, which rotates that. As you can see, it's a fairly standard slide connector. A lot of, of combiner, all the combiner wars, and actually quite a few third parties are starting to use this as well. So it is far more common around. So you start will be able to change your transformers around a lot more. Um, that's basically it. So you've got the universal hand gun foot joint. For the feet, you just extend the back claw almost like that. And then you simply stick that in like so to produce a stable base. And that is Wild Rider. We'll just do Breakdown as well now. So Breakdown is a similar thing. Now he already has that mould already on there, so there's nothing to move around. You just need to do exactly the same thing. The head part, so the top part comes all the way up like that. And then the entire head goes round, so that's level again. And then this bit, which has been coloured this time, flips up like that. You once again take your... You must join this one I've already set up and you stick it in there and he's done. Now while I'm here let's talk about the feet. The size of the cars are disproportionate to the foot. If one assumed that this were a human or an anthropomorphic human it would mean that your ankles are about twice the size of your feet. Not quite right, is it? And it does look a bit odd. I don't know why they... Well, I do know why they didn't give him basic feet. So they can make the arms and the joints just one one model for the whole lot and just change the colour schemes a bit, depending on which one you have. But if they were just a bit wider, it wouldn't look as silly as it is. Well, kind of speaks for itself, doesn't it? Anyway, all right. On to the body now, which, of course, is Motormaster. This is the most complicated transformation, as one would expect. So, with here, as you can see, with, well, you might not be able to see, um, there we are. So this part out here becomes where the feet go in, the slots there. So that's the part we'll be working with for that. So this transformation, as I've said before, it's, it's a little bit complicated. Um, so we'll start off by, I say a little bit complicated, it, it's very similar in, in elements to what you had before but elements of it are not. So, you would take these bit as you would be doing for Motor Master anyway, but now you've got the windows on this side, uh, and that's as far as that goes, in terms of making 
as far as you would go in terms of making mode master. This does flip down like that again. Now the arms, remember before we turn them around for mode master, we don't do that for this time, they just slide up here. The hands do just flip like flip back and kind of out of the way, and that flips forward. Because this is your arm connection socket. Same thing on this side. Flip that forward like that. The whole thing just flips up, kind of locks into place a bit, and that flips over like that to get it out of the way. And then this does lock in. It's not a particularly strong lock, which has its own set of issues, um, which will come to in due course. Now, for the arms, the legs rather, they actually do rotate out like this, down, same thing this side. So sideways rotation, then that goes straight down. It does flip around, and these flip up like so to cover some of the, the more menisaur, the rather the more motor master elements to produce the larger menisaur version. So it kind of looks like he's walking as a crab like that, which is a bit odd, but it becomes less odd as we go on. This then goes slots up like that to produce a bit more bulk there. This opens with it contains menisaur head. The whole thing flips up like that. Notably, it does give you some inner design work here for menisaur, which is completely lost when you do that. A bit odd. I think it's partially because the original Combiner Wars version, you're meant to have another little robot that plugs in here. Uh, that's clearly what these elements are for here. So if you don't have that, you've got the chest here. However, with the Unite Warriors, with this going over like that, it produces the chest plate anyway. And that's Menosaur's head, um, which kind of rotates on a little spindle up and down. So it's a bit of a different design from the original. It's still recognisably Menosaur, but it is a little bit different from before, because before we had the shoulders which up like that. So like that, uh, and you, you couldn't really see to his left or his right. It's kind of replicated a little bit with that, but it's nothing kind of this in that perspective, but it's... It's nothing like what it was, um, so not necessarily a bad thing. The other drawback is the way his arms connect, they do actually connect behind his head, which is a bit weird, but yeah, never mind. Okay, so leg connectors, very standard, they just, this slide here will go in there, but the whole thing just slips up and in and locks. Simple, so much simpler than some of the others have been. So, same thing like that, and of course the advantage with the with the slide up and then the lock is it keeps it secure, whereas remember the G1s, the head went in, um, but the head also popped out very, very easily as well. Obviously we've now a little bit out of shot, so we're just going to lift that up a bit higher there. Okay, so he's currently armless, hey, not a problem at all. We'll do dead end next. Now you've got a couple of options with the arms. Um, I'll come and I'll explain as we go. So, exactly the same as you did on Breakdown and Wild Rider. The bonnet, the hood, mirror, whatever, wing screen comes up like that. And that flips down like that, get it out of the way, and then this rotates up. You want it halfway this time. And you then flip this back. You can flip it back, you don't have to. Um, I'm going to. In theory, that's all you need and it would slot in like that. However, you do have the option to do a partial transform. Why would you want to do that? Because it gives him effectively an, another joint. It, it, you can't ro close that and rotate it back, you have to rotate it back and then close it. So you can, let's say, you can do a partial transform, like so. I have to put it back as I had it before. How did I do the partial transform? Yeah, you need to put the waist around like that. Then, I just put it back the way it was. Hmm. Bizarre, you can't. Well, clearly I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, you can't do a partial transform. You can on the area bots, uh, which is where I why I thought you could. Um, that still doesn't seem right, does it? I'm going to try try this one more time uh, because 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see what I see what. Got to red this rotate this bit down like that. Apologies for those watching, we'll try and get this right. <laughs> so, as you would for, for normal, we're then going to for, flip it like that and flip this round again so it's, it's still not too bad. The reason for doing this is because it gives him his a joint. So he's got a an elbow, otherwise he doesn't have an elbow. Okay, so now you get the, the enjoyable, hey, is it a foot, is it a gun? Actually, it's both. And a hand. Universal joint like that. They're not very impressive, but hey, that's what we've been given. I suppose at least they are. Actually, I'll put the wrong one on the wrong side. That's his other hand. Surprisingly, they do have a left and a right for the hands. Which, given that it's all meant to be interchangeable, is a bit of a, a bit surprising. Do they have a left or a right? No, they don't. They are interchangeable. The reason I thought that is because you had all the holes and gaps here. Um, but actually that's the same no matter which way you look at it. All the holes and gaps. It's interchangeable but it's a little bit disappointing that you've got all this leftover stuff that you didn't really need. Anyway, um, enough of that. So this bit goes into there. Like so. And the way the gummings work you do actually need to have this down just because you can have it up. But you then have no manoeuvrability at all at the top. So it will go, it will lock in place, and that's as far as it will do, it will lock in place, you won't be able to move it. So you see, by doing this, it's given him the ability to have an elbow as well, which is quite good. I'm just going to pop him down to the side for balancing issues, uh, as he's still got a sword to hold later on. Okay, so drag strip. Similar deal. We'll, He's a heck of a lot easier to, he says, while well, well struggling, to make it, there we are, to give him his elbow, because he just, that extends down anyway, that is just one piece. Well, it will come apart, but we're not going to. The head here is a bit more of a, more entertaining, if entertainment is the right word, because while this will happily go back, like so, Trying to think of the best way for it. We'll rotate it fully like that. That head just goes up like that, but the arms now do something a bit jazzy. In that they they kind of form. It's it's weird. They kind of almost form a little dance or something. It's a bit too, it's something like that. I think it's all designed just to cover up the fact that his head is there. Again, you, you've got some various options with how you play with this. You, you don't have to do all of that. You can just leave it as it is. You, you can rotate this all round fully. So you've got a couple of options with how you want it. Ultimately, it's whatever works, I think, as this is all kind of superfluous to the, to the transformation, it's whatever works for you that you find looks the most effective uh, and, and, and works. So I think the main reason for all of this is, is to cover up the head. Because if you have the head there, for example, that does fairly reasonably cover it, but if you have the head there, then it all becomes a little bit superfluous, but we're not going to dwell on that. So this slots into the mat there, like so, and then it's exactly the same, this slots in here. Okay, so we'll just rotate this up. We're still not quite done. All the other weapons that it comes with, but let him see, all the other weapons that it comes with. Well, Mendesaur's sword is formed out of Mona Master's part. The Mona Master's sword, Mona Master's gun, they do actually come slot together to make a huge sword. It does have this handle there, so you could uh, push, say, some form of lightning gun, but it's clearly meant to be a sword, so the handle kind of gets in the way. Now, he can't, doesn't hold it like some of the others. It actually slots in that little hole that I showed you earlier, which is a bit odd, because he's, he, he, it's, it's obviously in his hand, but he's not actually holding it. It's kind of a, a, a an extra part on there, a bit odd. The smokescreen ducks, they do actually have a place to go. They actually slot in the underside of what was his hand, so they go like that. You could have them up, I guess. 
as well if you wanted. I'm going to go like that just for views, views. Unfortunately, there is nowhere to put these two weapons. You can slot them into holes like that, for example, or that, but they tend to get in the way of movement and there is nowhere to put them. So unlike this, the area bots there, you have some bits left over. You just have to put them to one side. There he is, Manasaur. He's pretty good. Um, he looks looks pretty good. Much taller than the original one, much more movement than the original one. I don't like the feet, I don't like the hands, but that's fairly universal with the Combiner Wars release. Now the issue with the arms is when you move them, the first thing that happens is that. So this pit tends to come away, uh, which is not what you want. That The locking to keep that locked in place isn't strong enough. So you almost have to hold it to rotate it. I don't know how clear that all was, but, but trust me, when you start to move it, the robot disengages. This doesn't ever fully go together. It, it will do, but because there's now nothing underneath it, it tends to want to pop out. He, he, he will move around, like so, but he's a little bit clumsy. It's probably fairly accurate to the, to the robot. Actually, Menasaur's meant to be quite a good combination, so he's probably more accurate for the Devastator. And he's a little bit top-heavy with the, with the weight of some of the, of the stunt punch. In order to solve that, you kind of have to have him with his arms down. You can have his sword across him like that if you want. So it looks good. He's unusual in that he doesn't have a gun. A lot of them do have some a gun at some point. So many of them have a sword. And now it's starting to get a little bit commonplace or some form of melee, uh, melee weapon. Um, but he's unusual in that he only has a sword. I know that's exactly how Menasaur was, so it's quite nice that they kept that. But it's still a little bit unusual that he doesn't have a gun. Okay, so size comparison then. Obviously, he's now much taller than, than Darkwing, and considerably taller than Red Alert. And actually, the scale with Red Alert feels very good. Um, he's meant to be a lot taller. He's a combiner. As you can see, he's a little bit lopsided. That's due to the height difference between Breakdown and Wild Rider. You could solve that by having Wild Rider and Dead End together, but actually, you kind of want to keep the other ones as they are. So, he's good size comparison with those guys. And the rival combiner from Combiner Wars is of course Superion. And Superion's a little bit taller, but not much. Feels a good size with Superion as well. Uh, you know Superion's feet look so much superior. Superior? Well Superion, hey, how that works. Um, than men that saws just because of the scale. And also, interestingly, Superion's weapons do all slot into him. Whereas they don't with uh, Menasaur, which is a little bit odd, but the two look well together. Um, they really do hark back to the original releases. Um, I guess probably Superion's probably the slightly better of the two, but that's not to play anything against Menasaur, uh, that's just the way it is, but they do look very, very good together. Now, um, obviously the third party transforms are around as well, and this is where kind of all falls apart. So we compare him to against the unique toys of Bominous. There's a comparison. Bominous is significantly taller, significantly more detailed, significantly more articulated than Menasaur is. Um, he costs significantly more as well, I, I might add, uh, and it really shows. Um, it, it, it just shows that Men Menasaur is a different price point. You know, he, he is a mass-produced official toy, whereas Abominus is an expensive, um, minimally produced third-party toy. So they could do things that you couldn't do on Menasaur. To get that kind of detailing on, on Menasaur would push the price up significantly more, and that's not what he's about. He's about producing a good, updated combiner, not about producing a, I suppose, collector's, if you will, uh, a collector's combiner. But it's, it's, it's interesting to see uh, what Menasaur could have been. And indeed, there are third-party versions of Menasaur out there, but you will pay for them. If you want something that's reasonably priced, looks very impressive, particularly when you compare him with the original, there is nothing wrong with Menasaur at all, um, the Combiner Wars. I would definitely go for the, the, uh, 
Unite Warriors variants because it has the original colour scheme and the original uh, original membership. Obviously you could get their updated one for it, there's not really any reason want to, but if you want to go back to have some continuity with the G1 Transformers, which is after all what Combined Wars is still really meant to be, I'd get to use this version of it. Thank you very much for watching, please leave any comments below, uh, click to the other links and subscribe to some videos and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you for watching, goodbye.